Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. It's time for another live stream. Today is Thursday, November 16th, 2023. Sorry for the weird noises at the beginning of this uh, live stream today. I'm trying to fix the camera. I keep nudging it. I don't like the angle it's at, you know. Uh, we're working on it. We'll get it. Uh, I think that's pretty close. You know, I've been trying to make it so that way uh, you guys can see more of the shoe wall behind me um, and then have more desk in front of me as well so we can do the unboxings and stuff. Um, and, you know, there's just some adjustments that have to happen, so I appreciate your patience. Uh, everyone that's listening in on the audio-only version on the podcast, yeah, hopefully uh, none of that was too weird. Now I'm also uh, removing labels from the packages and stuff. So making all sorts of uh, podcasting mistakes here. One day I'll be a good podcaster. Today's not that day, but I appreciate uh, your patience with me anyway. Hopefully you're having a good run out here in Crystal Lake. It is really balmy, warm even. I ran with shorts and a t-shirt and no gloves. And uh, But it was windy. So, you know, trade-offs. Hopefully you have a good run uh, yourself. And for everyone else watching later but not live, welcome to the number one place. Uh, to get your information as to is this tasty because today we're having a little bit of a mukbang uh we got a new package in from uh kurtz energy and endurance bars i've been waiting on this package for a while kind of took a long time for to get here there was some uh communication stuff uh scheduling stuff that had to happen so yeah but they're here now and we'll try it but first uh you know let's uh see who else is here steven lung is here. He says the Carpuzzi Run Club single just came in. It feels so light and silky, but I think we're gonna have uh, a nipuation running in this. Haha. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, you could, KT tape is great for that. So maybe that's kind of uh, something that you can do. But hopefully, uh, you enjoy it, and hopefully, you have a good time running in it. Um. All right. Eric says, "Yo, what's going on, everyone? Easy four-ish today. Pretty short, but gotta go lift soon." There you go. Hitting the weight room has paid off in so many ways. No longer moving like a rusty bucket. Well, that's good news to hear. Glad to hear that. Um, all right. What are you guys talking about? Oh, okay. Here's what you guys are. I see it in the chat. You guys are feisty today already. And so I was like, what is going on here? Uh, and Mark Peterson is saying that new from Tracksmith is a run in the woods candle. With notes of sage and cedarwood, the candle offers a soothing olfactory experience akin to running through New England woods. Fifty-eight dollars. Um, <laughs> and Eliza says, uh, "I had to check because I thought you were joking, but no, that is real." Uh, and Mark says, "It's kind of an onion article for runner nerds, but here we are." And Ivan Flores says, "Tracks are selling candles now." LOL. I mean, I feel like it's a natural brand extension. You know what I mean? Like, if you want your house to smell like the Tracksmith house or like the Tracksmith pop-up, here's how you do it. I feel like that could work. You know, are there? Is there a fragrance? Is there cologne? I wouldn't be surprised if there's cologne or um, some sort of body spray. Although body spray is a combination of words, I don't think sound, think sounds very Tracksmithy. But I could see it. I'm not terribly surprised about it because they sell every i mean they got everything there's tracksmith jewelry there's tracksmith like casual wear you know um luggage and now senses you know you're gonna hit the other senses with the candles i mean it's the holiday season people love to give gifts runner gifts candles are a popular gift runners need gifts put the two together and you get a candle hmm Maybe. Um, I mean, let me know if anyone gets this. Let me know. I look forward to seeing Stephen Gnoza get this. Does, has anyone told Stephen about this? I feel like we should let uh, the serious runner know. Um, all right. Here we actually got a running shoe question. Daniel Burton wants to know. Co, are you going to test a Brooks Max shoes? Where, where, I have a pen. I have paper over here somewhere, although, where'd that go? Hold on. Hold on. Uh-oh. Where'd that notebook go? This is a notebook, but someone gave me two of these notebooks. And this is not the one that I wrote notes in yesterday. But I wrote notes in the other one yesterday. 
I forgot what I was supposed to do already because I wrote it down. And I need to send an email to, to the book rep. I just got an email from a book, book person today about doing stuff at the running event in Austin coming up. Um, so I'll be meeting with Brooks while I'm at the running event. And uh, also I got an invite to the, the y'all out boy after party. But I want to have them send me some Brooks Ghost Max ahead of time. Or I guess I could just wait. It, I'll, it'll be, it's in like two weeks. Maybe I'll ask if I can, they can have a pair for me there or send them ahead of time. Ahead of time would be preferable. But yeah. Yeah, they reach. You know, we've we've reestablished contact, so I'm I'm hoping um, to test the Brooks Ghost Max shoe. People seem to like it, so uh, I'm excited. Um, all right, uh, Tim Sechnik says ran the Athens Classic Marathon last weekend. Not a PB type of route, but definitely a bucket list type of experience. I hear it's very hilly. I hear it's killer. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, that does sound like a bucket list type of experience. Uh, Ivan Flores says, are you going to get the Hoka Satisfy Clifton Collab Shoe Co? Um, you know what? I did get an email about that one too. And, uh, the, you know, the email ended with like, you know, let me know if you, let us know if you would like to, uh, have, have a pair sent to you for editorial consideration. And I don't think I'm going to have to, to, I'm going to get it. Um, I don't. I, I've never tried anything from Satisfy before, and it seems a little bit kind of like outside of uh, my wheelhouse, you know, to Satisfy stuff. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know, but I don't. I think it's a beautiful shoe. I'm not sure which one I like more, the white one or the black one. Um, Tommy Runs has a pair. He was flexing on us the other day when we were on the relay call. Um, He's like. Oh, sorry, guys. I just got to move this shoe real quick. And they like flashed it in front of the screen in front of everybody. But um, yeah, so I don't I don't know that I'm going to get it because it's not like something that I would like review separately, you know. So like um, the collab shoes are interesting if I wanted to wear it around, but I don't know that I would wear that one around personally. So yeah. Um, all right. Mark Peterson said, you know what would be a most unlikely collab? Axe Body Spray and Tracksmith. I mean, if they wanted to get a, yo a younger uh, demographic, you know, what, you know what would make more sense, though? And no, no, I, I, I won't go there. I won't go there. There's another collab that would make more sense, but I will, I'll leave that one alone. Uh, Calvin Hong says, you know what? My spring marathon course was changed to an out and back and a 6 a.m. race start. Not too pleased. What? That's very weird. I've never heard of a race course changing after people have started signing up for it. I'm sure it's happened before. But um, that reminds me. Um, do we have to talk about the change of the start time for the tr marathon trials? They switched it to 10 a.m., which anytime someone says 10 a.m., I instantly think of that scene in Elf. Tomorrow, everybody, 10 a.m., Santa's going to be here. And then Elf goes, Santa! So when they said, like, we're changing the time to 10 a.m., I was like, Santa! <laughs> and I just made myself laugh, I think, but no one else. Um, yeah. Um, you know what? Frank Lurley says about that tracks with candle says it's almost worth it to send it to Steven Gnoza as a present. I should send it to him as a present. That's a good idea. See, I have a pen, but no paper. Oh, wait. Ah, this is it. Oh, I had to email CIM about media credentials. Forgot. Okay. So Brooks Ghost Mast. Do you know why I couldn't find this? So in this, this is an unfinished basement down here. And uh, it's, so it's concrete on the floor and that bounces sound around. And so I have a lot of like sound blankets, which 
strangely enough, look exactly like the kind of mats or blankets that movers use. But anyway, I have those and they're on the floor to kind of dampen some of the sound, uh, sound bouncing around. And it's black, the same color as this. So like, even though it was right by my foot, I couldn't see this. It was like hidden. But then I tapped it with my foot on accident and then I found it. So Brooks Ghost Max, that's number two on the to-do list. And then three is buy Tracksmith Candle for Steven. Nobody tell him. Yeah, I want it to be a surprise. For maybe I could just give it to him and I don't I'll see if he's gonna go to CIM. Then I'll just hand I could just hand it to him. That would be fun. All right. Uh, oh, Brian Lang said, that'd be a great gift to send for the Secret Santa. As a reminder, if you're in the Discord, we are doing a Secret Santa. So um, that, that would be a pretty funny one. Or Axe Body Spray. <laughs> don't say, no, 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 don't. Do not send Axe Body Spray. That, that is like, a, that, it, that would not be a great gift. Oh my goodness. Uh, you guys are so funny. So he says, Ganoza is likely to go to CIM, but he's not going to run. And that's bad news. Yeah, that's a bummer. The last time I saw him there, um, he ran it, but I think he like broke his foot during the race or something like that. So I feel like he, you know, he's that redemption race, you know? Um, Cannabis Culture Tech Life says, finally made it, finally made one, and but I'm not at the end of the stream. Well, glad you made it here. I know you've been here a lot. I know you tend to come in towards the middle or the end, and that's always cool too. But I'm glad you're here at, at the early side. And uh, Mark Peterson says, Co, I'm going to try that six by six minute workout today. Hopefully it'll be enough to propel me to a 10K PR uh, in one week on Thanksgiving morning. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it will. Um, if it does, I'm going to take complete credit, but I did see that Ben Johnson did the, uh, six by six minute workout and he called it the Kofuzi workout, which is very flattering, but it's a Jack Daniels workout. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say go for it. I mean, the first time you do it, it just feels miserable because you're like, why are these rests so short? Like a minute just is so fast. And then the six minutes take so long. Um, I usually build my way into it. Like at the beginning of a training block you know i'll do like three minutes um at threshold pace and then a one minute rest but i'll do like eight of them or nine of them, you know I'll, I, just because it's 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 rigorous but i mean the whole idea behind it is always based on effort but like at the beginning of a block like mentally i'm not always there but if you're a week out from a 10k pr i think i think you could just hop right into it i think you'd be good uh, Will Willing says, Co, have you ever thought about having Lisa Migliorini, the fashion jogger on the live stream? Uh, we've never really interacted before. Um, and so I don't know her. And um, I did see her at the New York City Marathon, but she was struggling. And I don't think she appreciated that I was filming her at the time. I felt, I kind of felt bad about it, but I still put her in the video because I thought that be, her fans would enjoy seeing it. But um, I didn't, get, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to say like she was mean to me or anything because she was just running. She might not have even heard me, but I don't, I don't know where I'm not familiar. You know, usually a lot of times it's like we connect, they'll like comment on my stuff. I'll comment on their stuff. And then we start chatting, you know, or I, I guess I'm explaining, I'm explaining in very long form, like how people become friends but uh um we're, i don't i don't know who she is i mean i know who she is but i don't i, I don't know her mm. daniel Burns said lisa would be a great interview i mean it would be uh i mean i don't know i just feel like you kind of have to like play in your zones you know sometimes and like she's i feel like two or three zones above above me because she's got like two million followers on instagram you know so it's just like a little a little different uh mr sneak says hosting a run in austin stay tuned i'm working on something it'll be an evening event we've tried doing one early in the morning and I, it was a, it was a lot of fun but um i feel like early might be hard for a lot of people to go to so i'm working on something 
I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll let you guys know if I end up making it happen. And then if that falls through and it's not something that I can invite everybody, I think, cause I think it's something I invite everybody to, but then if it isn't maybe something, let me check out my schedule here. Maybe something Thursday morning of the, that theory. Yeah. I don't have too much stuff. Maybe something Thursday morning, but I'm trying to work on something for Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening. But stay tuned. Uh, all right. Alf Dickinson said, I did 10 times 400 meters with 45 second rest yesterday. It felt good. Then I realized I was going to be 10 minutes early to pick up my kids from karate. So I, I jogged uphill and pulled my calf. See, that's what you get for doing hell work. <laughs> uh yeah um but yeah 45 seconds rest is very short that's pretty short you know i i've been thinking about the 400 meter workout that i do it's like any it's like 16 by do i do 16 i think i do 16 16 by 400 at 5k effort with 90 second rest um i was like i don't know something about this doesn't feel right i think i need to either run the 400 meters harder maybe more like a 3K effort versus a 5K effort. Um, or I need to make the rest shorter. And then as I was thinking that, yesterday I saw uh, Rory Linkletter posted a workout where he did a kilometer at mile pace, which feels like phew, that's a big work. That, that's a lot in and of itself. Um, and then he did 10 times 400 at 3K, 5K pace with 85 seconds rest. And I was like, Ooh, I was thinking about 85 seconds rest. So, I don't know. But, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. Like, 800 meters always feels long on the track. 400 meters kind of feels short. Maybe I'll do a 600 meter workout. I don't know. Um, but, anyway, Alf says uh, that the 6x6 six six minutes is going to have to wait since he pulled the calf. Well, hopefully it was just like a little, like a little tweak, you know. Um Hopefully, you can get back from that soon. Uh, and Mr. Sneak says, about something on Thursday in the evening, or Wednesday in the evening. Um, sounds perfect. Let's go. All right. Well, I'll hopefully have some more details soon for you guys. Um, Brett Reed says, will you be testing the Stride Duo? It's an interesting idea. I'm not... Uh, Stride hasn't reached out to me about that, and I don't feel like I want to test it. Uh, because a lot of those... Um, the stats that you get from having two stride foot pods. Um, I don't look at those stats. You know what I mean? So that's that's why I'm not sure that it's something I want. Kevin Hong says, I remember back in my track days at high school, our killer workout was 600 meter re beats with 85% with the 400 meter walk recovery. Oh, see, I was thinking like if I were to do the 600 meters, I would do 600 meters at 5K pace with a 200 meter jog. Just, I don't know. I feel like the 200 meter jog might be a little bit long, but also if you're doing that much at 5K pace, you really kind of want full recovery. So I feel like, and then you get, to two laps each time, you know? There's something about like doing a 600 meter and a 400 meter walk that that doesn't irk you. That doesn't feel weird. I don't know. I don't know. Super engine says, you know what? I think 200 meters feels on the track. It can, depending on how fast you're running for sure. Um. Well, D DJ Pastuff says, I did a 10 by 600 meter workout the other day with one minute rest. It was fantastic. 600 meters is a great distance. That seems like a short rest. I mean, depending on how fast you're doing that, a minute seems short. Oh boy. Adam says, yeah, I like a 1,000 with a 200 meter jog on the track. See, then it's three laps around. See, that, that's, that seems sensible. <laughs> uh, and Mariah Parala says, my Kafuzi Run Club singlet and signed koozie just got delivered. Woo! Awesome, Maria. Hope you enjoy it. Um, I almost had enough koozies for everybody. Like the last like 25 people, 20 people didn't get one. 
So I feel bad about that. But I had way more than I thought I had. Uh, and Maria, I'm glad that you got one. Mm. Steve76 says, do you use your watch or markings on the track to find the 600 meter mark? Um, I don't, I don't, well, I've never done 600 meter repeats on the track. I don't remember the last time I've done 600 meter repeats on a track, but if I were to do it, I feel like I would just go to this, um, the 200 meter start point. So if you start at the finish, go one lap around and then go into the 200 meter start. That's how I would do it. And then jog to the start line again. I don't know. Lila Lou says, Co, have you ever had a coach or have you always made your own plans? Um, uh, both. Uh, so I've had a coach, like in high school, I had a coach. I was coached in college for the year and a half that I ran track in college. Um, and then after that, I've been mostly self coached. I would use like Hal Higdon plans and stuff off the internet. And then I was coached for one marathon build when I did uh, a build up with Nike and Edge Athlete Lounge. Um, which is a Nike powered space um, or was a Nike powered eh, long story, but um, with coach Robin um, over at edge athlete lounge. Um, so she wrote out a plan for me at that point. And then, so she coached me for that one kind of season. Uh, and then since then I've been uh, messing it all up on my own. So <laughs> um, yeah. let's see what else we got here you guys are talking about a lot of track workouts these are more complicated see the thing about tra track workouts that i dislike is that it's never just like you know like Al alf dickinson had one 10 by what was it 10 by 400 that's a that sounds like a great workout um, Adam said a thousand meters with 200 meter jog. That sounds like a great workout. But a lot of times when you see a track workout, it's like, all right, first we're going to do this and we're going to do 600 meters at this pace with this jog. Then we're going to do 800 meters at this pace with this jog and then 200 meters with this pace with this jog. And then we'll do four sets of that. In between the two sets, we're going to spike up. And I'm just like, what, what, what are we doing here? There's too many, there's too many numbers. How am I supposed to remember this? Do we, do you program this into your watch? I don't know. So it's just, that's, I just don't like, I don't like complicated workouts. I think for some people it's great because then it moves things along and it's like, all right, you're done with this phase and you're on to that phase. But for me, it's just a lot. Mm. Al says, have you ever met Hal Higdon? I love that guy's book. I didn't know he had a book. Um, I've listened to, who interviewed him at one point? I don't know. I listened to an interview of him, but I've never met him in person. I, I wouldn't even know what he looked like. Like if I saw him at an expo, I would not know. Mm. Brian Lang says, aren't gym workouts as complicated? Uh, not the way I do it. <laughs> I just, I, I do like sets of six, three sets per exercise. And then I do like four exercises. That's it. That's all about all I can remember. Adam says, KISS, which I love that acronym. Keep it simple, stupid, because I am i can't remember all that stuff. And complicated stuff just is a really good way for me to feel overwhelmed and stop doing things, you know? Dustin Wessel says, ah, I miss a good track workout so much. I graduated a calf injury, but finished my first marathon in New York City, and now I'm out for probably four weeks. Well, congratulations on the first marathon. And, uh, you know, this is kind of a good, if you're, if you're going to be out of commission for a little while, this is a good time of year. You got the, some holidays coming up, and uh, you can relax, and then, you know, right around, it'll be like New Year's resolution time when you can start getting back into it. Which is, you know, sometimes a fun time to be back in, into it, you know. I feel like overall it's a good time. Mm. All right. Um, let's get to the box. Today, 
Uh, we've got some food here, which is perfect because I came down here basically straight from my car on the run. I'm still in my sweaty run clothes. And now we're going to eat. And I'm starving. I'm so hungry. I even ate a big... I've been... I think, you know, I've been getting ready for the Houston half and um, working out more. And because of that, like, my appetite has just gone through the roof. I, I eat breakfast before I eat breakfast, and then I eat a pre-dinner before I make dinner, and then I'll eat dinner. It's just, I'm insatiable. So, um, I got a lot of stuff in here. Look at all this. Oh, boy. A variety of things. Oh, I got some stickers. You know what I do with all the stickers? I have a pile over there by the steps when you come down into the basement. And um, my kids, it's just free stickers for the kids. And the kids love it. So like all their water bottles are just covered in running brands, which is kind of funny. Um, not it's, it's not as like kind of silly for like my older daughter because she does run, but my seven-year-old, she has a bandit sticker on her water bottle that she takes to school every day. <laughs> it's the one she picked. She, she likes it. All right. Where should we start? Oh, boy. We got... Uh, I don't know what these are. Got some of these things, which seem like little bars. We got some granola. Let's see what's in this box first. Oh, okay. Just more flavors of this stuff. We got so many flavors. All right. Let me know. Put in the chat which ones you want me to eat. Okay. We'll just do a couple of them. There's Patty's Butterscotch Bliss. So many flavors. Chocolate Blueberry Blast. Chocolate Cranberry Explosion. Chocolate Pumpkin Spice. Chocolate Java Buzz. Chocolate Peanut Butter Blitz. Double Chocolate Oat Extreme. Chocolate Pretzel Crunch. All right. While I wait for you guys, if you guys want to pick any of these, I will uh, start with the double chocolate oat extreme. Um, what, what is the nutritional information on these? There's 250 calories per each of these bars, which feels like a, a really good number. Um, 44 grams of carbs and four grams of protein in this thing. Man, they've got potassium in here, calcium, 10 grams of fat. So this is, this is nice. There's a lot in here. Here's what it looks like. It's like a really dense uh, granola bar and uh, soft, not crunchy. That's very good. That tastes like something that someone made for you. You know what I mean? Didn't feel like something being made in a factory. Hmm. That's really good. All right, you guys had some um, questions. <laughs> Calvin says, hmm, there's not enough chocolate ones. <laughs> um, all right, Daniel Burton was the first one to say something. You want blueberry? Mm, I'm not sure I'm into that one. David said, Choco PB Blitz. Another vote for chocolate PB Blitz. Frank says, this is the season for pumpkin. Hmm. And Eric Paramount just wants to go extreme. Oh, I already got the extreme. Um, all right. Let's do um, chocolate peanut butter Blitz. Let's try that one. The numbers are all kind of pretty much the same. This has 42 grams of carbs and 255 calories. Someone asked about saturated fats. There's 11 grams of fat in this, and then six of them are saturated. Zero trans fat. I don't really know much about how to read stuff for fat content information. I don't know, like, like I don't know what that means. This is chocolate peanut butter blitz. It doesn't smell like super strongly peanut buttery. It's drier than the first one. These are all very good. I like these a lot. I'm not sure I'm getting blitz out of it, but 
Chocolate peanut butter is definitely there. That's a good one. Come mm. along said this would pair well with a scoop of mayo. <laughs> um, Robert Grieger says, eat the whole box so we know you actually enjoy it. <laughs> oh, man. Governor says, the ASMR is real. I'm going to need a glass of milk, and I'm not even the one eating it. <laughs> uh, I mean, this, this is good stuff. All right. What was another one that you guys voted for? Someone voted for blueberry. All right. I don't, I don't love blueberry flavored things all that much, but I do like blueberries and oatmeal. So maybe I'll like this one. Hmm. All the numbers are different, but they're kind of like in the same kind of realm for these things. Chocolate blueberry. Kind of smells just like fruit, like dried fruit a little bit. I'm not sure I'm getting like a blueberry smell. Mm -mm. That's nice. If you like blueberries, that's it. That one's not my favorite flavor, but it's not bad. I just don't think I like blueberries that much. All right, let me do this one instead. Chocolate cranberry explosion. Cause I love I love dried cranberries. I put that in my oatmeal. I put it in my salads all the time. I feel like dried cranberries, walnuts, and um, goat cheese in a salad. That's pretty much one of my favorite ways to eat salad. Not that I like salad that much, but it makes for a tasty salad. I just like I just love cranberries. Yeah, this is nice. This is real nice. It's tart. Stands up to the oatmeal flavor. I gotta tell you, I'm not tasting a huge amount of chocolate, but I don't care. This this cranberry one is real good. This is my I think this is my favorite one so far. Although double chocolate oat extreme. I don't know if the, the oats are extreme or the chocolate's extreme. That one that first one was good. Oh. Frank LaHuler says, I just made cranberry scones. It's really the season for fresh cranberries. Is it? Is that why there's cranberry sauce at Thanksgiving? Because it's is that cranberry season? Does that mean that um, Emma Coburn's like super busy right now? Doesn't she have a cranberry farm, or her husband has a cranberry farm? Who's the one? Is she the one that has a cranberry farm? Who is it? Um, Kevin Hong said it, it has chocolate. Like Lacroix has flavors. Um. Yeah, some of the chocolate isn't as strong as I'd like it to be, I think. But, you know, most a lot of the granola bars I eat are like kids' granola bars now these days, too. So it's like, all right, sorry, guys. I got a phone call coming in here. Oh, boy. Um, yeah. But I would say it has more, more of a noticeable chocolate flavor than a LaCroix has flavors, you know. Um, Lila Lou says... Um, Emma Comer just finished her cranberry season. That's good. Mm. All right. Maybe we'll eat some more if I get hungry before the end of this. And I, I got to remember, you guys gotta remind me, I got to leave a little bit early today because I got a phone call right after this that I can't miss. All right, we got some uh, granola. It says like granola, but way better. It's called Bang and Berry. They their words, not mine. A naturally great energy food. It looks like granola. It says it's not granola. Um. Okay. So if you're gonna have it as in a bowl of it, you can have it's 250 calories, 45 grams of carbs, six grams of protein, eight grams of fat. Six of them saturated. Let's try it. You know what I love? 
clusters of granola. You know what I dislike when granola just looks like um, little oats. That makes me angry. It's crunchy, very crunchy. Is that blueberry? What, blue, what berries are in here? Cherries, blueberries, cranberries, raisins. I also really enjoy dried cherries. The dried cherries that my wife and I get. Not like we out, go out and get them, for, but we, we order them from a place called Gerbs. But that stuff is so good. The cherries are like really big dried cherries, so like you're getting a lot of flavor in each one. Also really good in the salad. Oh boy, this is good. I could, I could eat this all day. This is really tasty. Oh my goodness. Man, what, 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 what is making this taste so good? What's the sugar that's in here? Um, organic brown rice syrup, organic raw sugar, organic wheat flour, organic eggs, organic coconut oil. I don't know. It's really good. There's something that's adding a really nice sweetness to it. Mm, just delicious, guys. I'm also very hungry, but even if I weren't super hungry, this is good stuff. Allergen information for those of that you need it. Um, clearly, one of them is a peanut butter flavored one, uh, but it contains egg, milk, soy, coconut, and wheat, and manufactured in a facility where peanuts are present. Um, see, the rest of these I don't think are marked for individual sale necessarily. Oh, yeah. So, um, all of these say that they're manufactured in a facility where peanuts are present. Some of them do have peanut butter in them. Um, so just be aware of that if that's relevant information for you. All right. Ooh. Hmm. St. Pete Runner says blueberries are better than cranberries 100%. I'm glad that there's people that enjoy the blueberries. I'm just not one of them. You know, hmm. Hmm. Camel Hong said the audio listeners are having a time of their lives. Hopefully, you guys enjoy that. Um, you know what's funny is so, like, when I'm going for runs, I listen to a lot of podcasts as, as well, and um. Lately, some of the podcasts that I've been listening to, um, there have been sounds that like really throw me off and keep making me think that someone's like behind me or to the side of me somehow. And the sound is so like convincing that I think that like I, I'm, I'm constantly like looking to the side. I'm just flighty right now. Um, once it was a whistle, like a whistling, like someone like like that kind of sound. Did that and I, th I thought someone was like trying to get around me and then another time it was like um there was some like someone talking in the background somewhere like in an interview like someone in another room was talking and i could hear it and it sounded like someone was like on the other side of some trees i don't know so some weird stuff has been happening to me audio wise but Brian, like, would this be a good yogurt topping? This would be a fantastic yogurt topping. I mean, I feel like most granolas, I don't really want to eat right out of the bag. I want to eat on top of yogurt. This one I could eat right out of the bag. It's like a nice, like, it's like having a bag full of cookie crumbles. You know, it's just, it's not cookie sweet, but it's just, you could eat a whole bunch of them, you know? That, 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 that stuff's really good. That stuff's really good. Mm-hmm. Stevie76 wants to know, what's a Lemming's favorite granola bar? A cliff bar. There we go. That's it. That's it. Um, Mark Peterson says, on this issue of like sounds coming in your headphones while you're running, uh, he says, uh, I hate it when there's sirens in a song when I'm listening to music while running. I agree. I definitely agree. 
Um, other sounds that I hate, but while it happens while driving all the time in in radio on the radio ads, and they're clearly doing it on purpose, you know, is when there's like iPhone alarm sounds, like either text messages or phone ringing alarm sounds. I'll intentionally put it in the like the radio ads. That drives me crazy. And Eric says, uh, sirens while listening to news interviews makes me look around. I hear you. I hear you. Mm. <laughs> Frank says, you know, it'd be really freaky if you had someone crunching really loudly behind you while you were running. Yeah, that's true. That's true. If someone were eating. But like, you know, it's anything that's like a sound of a human, you know, that's kind of like, that's not like conversation makes it sound like it's not from the podcast you're listening to. It makes it sound like it's a, an ambient sound, you know? Um, Duke BB 22 says, you know, if you don't like the sound of people eating, this is not the live stream for you. Yeah, probably not. Um, as a reminder, um, that, or that reminds me, um, Next week, I'm going to be out of town um, at my in-laws place for Thanksgiving because the kids are um, out, of, out of school all next week. And then I have to actually check with my wife. We're going to drop them off. It's weird. So they, the kids have the school week off for Thanksgiving. But parent-teacher conferences are Monday and Tuesday. And so what we're going to do this weekend, we're going to drop, go back, drop the kids off. Then we're going to come back because it's not that far. And then do parent teacher conferences and stuff. And then, um, and then we'll go back again. So I don't know when we're going to be driving. I was originally planning on doing live stream Monday and Tuesday, but I don't know if we'll be in parent teacher conference or stuff. I'll double check. I'll let you guys know tomorrow. But it won't. We won't have live stream Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for Thanksgiving, or for Thanksgiving in the U.S. Um, and maybe Monday, Tuesday. But I'll I'll let you guys know tomorrow. Mm. Lala P says, "Believe in the run, always have sirens in the background." Do they? I don't even think if I've heard a siren in the background. I don't know. Mm. And uh, who is saying it? Adam says about cranberries. They're just a sugar delivery vehicle. You have real cranberries like in the bog, I guess. Isn't that where they're harvested from? A bog? B-O-G? I know they're very bitter and you have to add just like a bunch of cranberries to it. They're, I mean, the cranberry people were the ones that were the most against like the added sugar thing that you had to put on labels, right? Remember like the FDA was trying to do the thing like on a nutrition label? Should you have to add in like how much sugar is in something and then how much sugar did you add to that something? Um, like this one, it says total 45 grams of carbohydrates. Um, dietary fiber is three grams. Total sugars is 25 grams and includes six grams of added sugars. Like the cranberry people were like, you can't do that to us because then people will know how much sugar we're putting in there. But then they had to do it anyway. They lost, I guess. Not that as a win or lose situation, you know? Mm. Frank says, unsweetened cranberry juice is rough. I don't think I've ever had unsweetened cranberry juice. You know what I do love, though, is cranberry sauce. The jello -y one, not the chunky one. I like, the, I, eat the, I like to eat the chunky one, but in terms of like... It's fine, but like uh, I also just love, especially like on leftovers, I like the the jello, the gelatinous cranberry sauce. It's very good. I just think it's good. Do Johnny Dodgen says, like, I feel we, like we just heard the audiobook version of your Runner's Weekend food montage. <laughs> just a bunch of crunching. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. 
you know, I was listening to, um, I was listening to Erin Azar's um, podcast that she did for the New York Marathon weekend. And it kind of reminded me of like a, um, in a way of like an NPR podcast. Cause you know, when like the NPR ones are more like old timey radio shows where there's story, there's musical transitions. It's not like an interview or a live stream like this is, but it's like telling a story. So there's pacing, there's pauses, there's deliberateness to it. And then there's like ambient noise to bring you into a scene, you know? And like when Aaron was like, talking about the new york marathon from different locations you could hear the ambient noise and i was like this is very like enveloping you know and i was like i like this how do i do more of this kind of storytelling i'm like i don't i don't know it's not maybe not my kind of storytelling but i like it so i don't maybe need to do that but i'd like to listen to more of it but i don't know where else to find that kind of stuff because like yeah then you could go to the more very like very highly produced podcasts like things like serial for example but like every time i like want to start one i'm like oh i don't have the energy to start like a series you know and i'm like so i never end up listening to them so i don't know Mm, Sleep Singer says, hey, Easy Co. LOL. I work at an NPR station. LOL. No, I mean, I love those kinds. That's what I'm saying. Like, they're very well produced and they're just very, it's like, a, not saying that they're old timey, but like, before like television became huge, like people really spent more time and effort in the storytelling of it um, and creating the narration, creating the, like, setting the scene, set, creating like the tableau, you know? And a lot of people don't do that anymore. Um, so like when you hear like not sound effects but like ambient noises and stuff because most podcasts these days and a lot of radio shows it's like get the highest quality studio mics you can with you know ambient noise rejection so it's just really clear vocal audio and so you're like you're we've become like untrained or unfamiliar with ambient noise in a audio environment which sounds kind of counterintuitive you know so that's kind of where I was going with that. Mm, Mark Peterson wants to know, have you watched Only Murders in the Building? I haven't seen that one. Um, and Eric Vesh says, who and what are your biggest influencers as a content creator? Uh, you know, it changes a lot. I mean, there are many. Um, and I think about this question a lot, actually. And I always kind of like, I'm like, oh yeah, that also is a pretty really big one. And so like the the quick, easy answer is like, certainly like Casey Neistat, because he was huge in, and still is huge in the YouTube space. Um, but I'll also say uh, on the other hand, um, like skate and ski and surf videos from like the late 90s, um, that was always a huge inspiration for me as well. Um, I used to watch those like crazy. And then I was realizing it the other day, because I forget what I was doing, but uh, Armageddon came on. And then I realized uh, that uh, I've watched a lot of Bruckheimer movies and a lot of my um, B-roll capturing is very heavily influenced by Bruckheimer which I don't know if that is that something to be proud of or should I hide that fact? I don't know. So I'd say nice that Bruckheimer um, and skate videos. <laughs> so I think that's, I think that's where I'm at. Mm, sorry. My watch is beeping at me. Mm. All right. Uh, that was a good question. 308 bar says, uh, new ASMR game, identify the food Ko is eating on runner's weekend. I think that could be a fun audio only game. Should we do an audio only game one time for the podcast? I, I think we should do that. Um, and the game will be like, I'll just play like the, the audio clip. I think, I think, I think maybe we should try that. Cause I think I could play audio clips or what I could just do is re-render the audio, like the, vi the video clip, but with a blank screen on it. 
So all you do is hear the sounds. But you won't really hear me eat because I don't like, you know, I, I don't put, well, I guess I do put the microphone right to my mouth sometimes or the camera. But you'll just hear ambient sounds from the restaurant. But maybe, let's see if I could do that. Let's see if I could do that. Maybe we'll try that. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to do that for next week, but we'll see. Let me write that. Let's see, I got my notebook here. Perfect. Write that down. Name that food sound. Food eating sound from Runner's Weekend. Um, yeah, there we go. See? Look at this. Got a nice long list of stuff. Uh, you gotta get it done now. Oh, you guys are giving me so much homework. Mm. <laughs> Cannabis Culture Tech Live says, 90% of, of it will be pizza. Well, from from the um, n the New York one, for sure, 90% will be pizza. Um, but not always, you know? And so, like, yeah. So maybe the next time, next one I'm doing, here's what we'll do. So I'm going to go to uh, Texas soon um, for TRE. The week after Thanksgiving, I'm going to Texas. Oh, so that week, too, I w there won't be any live streams. Oh, boy, guys. So we'll have like maybe maybe two next week and then none for like the week of Thanksgiving and the entire week after that. But hopefully I'll see you guys either in Texas or in Sacramento. But um, I'll I'll do it. I'll set it up so that I'm narrating. Maybe I'll I'll mic myself up. I'll mic myself up. I'll have a, I'll have a, like a lapel mic, and then we'll do the guess what I'm eating. There we go. There we go. That's the idea. Chocolate cranberry explosion. That's my favorite one. Mmm, look good. All right. Kevin Hong says, time to go, I think, hopefully, for your phone call. You're right. Thanks for the reminder. And Jeff Peterson says, though, but, like, the audio listeners can't respond or interact. I know. But here's the thing. We'll play it on here. So we'll play together, and they can listen in. But it is an audio-first game, you know? Because everything here that we play, a lot of it's very visual, you know. So I, I think I like the idea of recognizing the audio only listeners, giving them an audio first game. Here's the thing: what if all the audio listeners are not ASMR people? I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. Well, we'll try it. We'll, I think it'll be fun for everyone here, and hopefully for the podcast listeners as well. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for today. Um, Supernova Rise video went out this morning. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, I'm going to be filming a bunch more videos and then releasing them all throughout next week. So there'll still be content next week, even if there aren't live streams. But there will be at least one more live stream tomorrow, Friday, same time as today, 1 p.m. Central Time. And hopefully I'll see you then. In the meantime, be safe out there, everybody. Thanks.